Oh, the Virginia alien spoke, according to James Fox. This is amazing. Get in here. Let's talk about it. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like. Please smash subscribe and the bell to be notified of future videos. And please uh, join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. I'd love to see you there. And of course, comment on the story as I'm going through it. Now, hopefully some of you will have seen the excellent documentary by James Fox, uh, A Moment of Contact, that came out last year uh, about the amazing UFO crash uh, and retrieval that happened in Virginia, Brazil, uh, where there were two beings that were alive that emerged from the craft and that were wandering around the town encountering various people. And uh, one was uh, you know, forcibly apprehended by the police, you know, kind of tackled and that physical contact with the being actually led to that uh, police officer passing away. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes contact with the phenomenon has, the, you know, similar uh, effects. Uh, so uh, and, uh, at any rate, they were both apprehended and taken into custody. And uh, I think they both died. Uh, they were ultimately passed into the custody of the United States government, which also retrieved the craft. But before they passed away, at least one of them communicated with human beings. So let's find out what he said. This is awesome. This is amazing. I mean, it's kind of sad because he was a, a dying being. And uh, I do take... Uh, you know, I, I respect that, but, uh, uh, but it is amazing to, when you hear contact between, you know, beings and, and humans and actually get intelligent communication from them. So let's, let's find and one out. one of them was captured alive. Cause I, I know that too. He claims in his book that he meets with these two doctors that had worked on one of the creatures in the hospital and that I didn't put any of this in the movie because I don't have anybody's testimony other than a book. That's it. I could tell you, and you guys could take it with a grain of salt. You can believe it. You can not. No, that believe works. It. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So Good according call. to these doctors, that that Doctor Roger Lear uh, ac accounts in his book, these two doctors during a procedure, they, the the creature had a, a a wound somewhere. They were trying to fix it, do something, a leg, broken leg, something, and um, all of a sudden the creature kind of comes more to life. It was alive, but it kind of comes to life and it communicates with the two doctors telepathically. And again, this is according to Dr. Roger Lear's book. The Dr. Roger Lear heard the account directly from the two doctors at Humanitas Hospital who were there and, and experienced this. His word against everybody. Yeah, well, it's exactly yeah. when he's dead. Yeah. So, yeah. And there was another guy in the room. There was a guy that traveled with with Dr. Roger Lear and I tracked him down and he had just died. So I didn't get his testimony. He was also in the room. So now the only person left in the room is Ubedar Jara, the two doctors, which I have no idea where they are and Ubedar Jara's son and Ubedar Jara won't talk to me. And apparently the telepathic communication was, I feel sorry for you humans. You have no idea about your potential, who you really are. Yeah. That's what it said. Holy According shit. to the book and, Dr. Roger Lear and the doctors. Yeah. So I, I was like, I contacted people that knew Dr. Roger Lear. They said he doesn't make stuff up, that he was a solid witness. I said, look, I can vouch for the whole book except for that because I don't have those tapes. Well, good. Again, good of you to not put that in the documentary because that's a heavy thing and you can't. I can't prove your it. Full prove it. Yeah. C couldn't prove it. So I did. I left but it that's out. That's wild. Yeah. If I would have gotten testimony from someone who heard it out of the doctor's mouth, I might have considered putting it in but I couldn't. Whoa, isn't that amazing? So the being said, I feel sorry for you humans. You have uh, some, you know, you have great potential and you don't even know what you are. Uh, that's just incredible. Now, I have researched alien abductions and contact experiences extensively, and I'm sure many of you have too. Um, and it's always fascinating to, to see what the beings say to people. And sometimes they, there's broad commonalities in what they say. And this is something that you hear sometimes, uh, that humans do have this great potential that for whatever reason, we just don't realize. And uh, sometimes they even say you have greater potential than we do or something like that. 
uh, or a different potential. So what does that mean? I, I would love to know. And uh, occasionally you'll get little glimpses of an answer, but they don't always line up. Unfortunately, that's uh, just kind of true in contact experiences. Sadly, you can't necessarily trust what the beings have to say because they there's a lot of discrepancies between their various accounts, uh, like where they came from, why they're here. Um, you know, and, and there's enough commonalities between what they're saying where it looks like they're trying to advance a certain narrative. Usually we're weak, we're dying, and we need you to uh, continue, uh, you know, whether that's hybridization or something else. And But there you get so many different versions of that story uh, that it's it's obviously, there, there doesn't, doesn't seem to be true necessarily because there are so many different versions of it. Obviously, they can't all be real uh, and true, and yet that is what they keep telling people. So... You know, and but they're all generally the same, uh, getting across those broad points. We're weak, we're dying, and we need you to survive. So you're powerful and mighty, and we really need you, and uh, we're weak and uh, no threat to you. So that's the general message they're trying to get across, and they do that in various ways with various different versions of that story. Uh, that's very common, but there is a little bit more to this. Um, here we go. This is from Roger Lear, who was actually there, who James was talking about. Suddenly, out of nowhere, the room began to fill with a greenish mist. And this is in the operating room when they're working on the being. Uh, we all stepped back from the operating table. We did not immediately know the origin of this mist and feared it might be toxic. And of course, you know, uh, one police officer died from contact with these beings, so they were right to be very cautious and afraid of this mist. One of the operating room nurses began frantically banging on the operating room door. Wow, what a crazy uh, uh, incident. And you know, let's see, what, what does the wand say? This occurred in the OR right before the Virginia being telepathically communicated to the head doctor the info about how humans are spiritual beings living in a temporary shell uh, after the doc looked into the being's eyes. Now, is this an expansion on what James Fox was just saying? Is this a continuation of that con uh, that contact? Um, this is probably, yeah, this is from J Roger Lear's book, UFO Crash in Brazil, a genuine UFO crash with surviving ETs. So if any of you have read that book and know uh, the full quote that the alien said, I would love to hear it. Well, let's see if that's anywhere down here. A follow-up quote would be really helpful. I'm not seeing anything. Uh, but so let's just try to connect those two quotes that we have. Uh, let's see. Let's see. If there's no. Nope. Okay. So the being said, uh, "You don't know your full potential. I feel sorry for you." And according to the Juan from Roger Lear's book, he also said, uh, "He told the being said, uh, told the doctor info about how humans are spiritual beings." living in a temporary shell. And this was communicated telepathically uh, when the being made eye contact, which is a thing that happens a lot when contact experiences. They need eye contact, or at least that really helps. Sometimes it even helps seemingly to be very uh, in close proximity with the beings. They want to be right up in your face looking in your eyes, and they can uh, communicate better seemingly. But sometimes they can communicate from orbit or wherever. So, you know, another dimension. Uh, but yeah, so very interesting. And, and this is a variation on, on stuff that I've talked about before that beings have said, uh, you know, uh, and it's interesting. He says, we are living in a temporary shell. Sometimes they have called human beings containers, which doesn't sound really great. But uh, you could interpret it to mean something positive or negative. I mean, it could simply mean what they're saying right here, that we are living in a temporary shell, but we are spiritual beings. And, uh, you know, this is not our home. Um, you know, this higher dimension is our home. You know, if you want to call it heaven or uh, pre-birth existence or, you know, uh, the densities or the 
fifth dimension or the eleventh dimension, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, so the, the astral realms. There's all sorts of different models of reality. And that's kind of one of my uh, pet projects, is trying to d develop a working model of reality uh, that incorporates a bunch of the, the models that are out there. You know, uh, looking at the, the Law of One and the Books of Seth and the, the Voyagers and, you know, uh, trying to get a functioning model of reality. Also incorporating what I've learned in near-death experiences and uh, out-of-body experiences. But the problem is they don't all line up. Yeah, in psychic channeling and alien channeling, there's various uh, versions of, of the model of reality out there. I would love to know what that is, but I, that may be above my pay grade. So, but anyway, so this is really interesting. We, got, we have beings uh, communicating with the doctor that worked on it. Uh, unfortunately, it was not a successful procedure, ultimately, and uh, I believe that both beings passed away. Uh, if one of them was taken into custody, I don't remember, but uh, if that is what happened, please uh, refresh my memory. Uh, anyway, a really interesting encounter. Uh, ultimately, the uh, U.S. government did seize the beings, uh, alive or dead, in their ship. And, uh, you know, that is, is, is how, how things roll. The U.S. seems to be in charge of the, US, the global UFO crash retrieval program. But there are other teams in other places probably working with the U.S. in retrieving craft on their own or at the direction or behest of the U.S. Uh, Ross Coulthard has talked about a UFO crash retrieval team based out of Australia that went outside of Australia to retrieve a craft, uh, which is really interesting because he also has another story about a U.S. UFO crash retrieval team based out of Long Beach that came into Australia to retrieve a craft. So um, why, if they had a team in place in Australia, did they not retrieve the craft in Australia? Why was the U.S. team doing that? Yeah, a lot of questions. We don't know because they don't. They won't tell us. Uh, so, uh, but at any rate, a really interesting story. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinions on this. And if you have other stories or additional uh, related anecdotes from other cases or even expansions on this case, I would love to hear that too. Uh, so comment below, give this video a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Uh, smash that subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on uh, social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. I would love to see you there and uh, check out some of my other videos. Uh, until next time, this is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.